In this lesson, we are going to discuss um, comparing the mean and the median. Just as a reminder, the mean is x bar and the median is capital M. Remember, mean also is another way of thinking of the average and median is also thinking of the middle data point. Okay, so comparing the mean and median basically means when you're describing a distribution, you need to give it shape, its center, and its spread. We've discussed shape before by having a symmetrical data set or having a skewed data set, meaning here we could have left skewed or we could have had right skewed. Spread, you know, is also finding the range. So you take your minimum and your maximum and you subtract them. The third piece that you have to give is the center. Now we've just been kind of estimating the center. We're going to get into finding a little more of an exact number for that center. So the mean and median are what are used to give the center of a distribution. But which one are you supposed to use and when? There's a difference depending on what type of distribution you have. Now remember, distribution just means what does your graph look like? Okay, that's kind of, that's just remember saying those are your bins and how many times that you have those numbers in your bins. So here you're going to have um, that you can see that there's three distributions here on this graph. Okay, each one of them you will notice is symmetric in shape. It may not be perfectly symmetrical, but they are roughly symmetrical in shape. Okay, or bell-shaped, whichever way that you want to call it. Symmetrical just is the more preferred way of saying it. When you have symmetrical data, what ends up happening is your mean and your median are both at about the same point. Okay, so when you're talking about your symmetric, finding your shape, it's symmetric. Your spread, remember you can do your maximum and your minimum. I apologize, I was interrupted and now I don't know where I left off. But if, as you can see, these three graphs are symmetric in shape. You can find the range, you can find the center by estimation. Okay, when you're finding the center, now though you want to give an exact number. When you're doing symmetric distributions, you want to use the mean to describe your center. So you will have to find out what the mean is of your data, getting it from a table or whatever it is, and then calculating what the mean is or the average. Okay, so when you're doing symmetric information or when you have a symmetric graph, you want to use the mean to describe your center. So what happens if the graph is not symmetrical? If the graph is not symmetrical like these three, it's considered skewed. So here on the first one you have one that is considered right skewed. This would be considered left skewed and this one also down at the bottom in red would be considered right skewed. When it's right skewed or left skewed, no matter how uh, more severe of a skewness it is or not, you want to use the median. So when you have a distribution that's skewed, you want to use the median for your center. So you have to go through and you have to find out what that middle number is. Now depending on your data, it could be easier um, to find than others. So here you would have roughly your median being somewhere around here. Here would be the next one, and here would be the next one. Okay. Essentially, your median is going to be close to your peak, okay, depending on how high your peak is and all the rest of your distribution. But the goal to remember for this part is that when you have a skewed distribution, you want to use the median for your center. One of the other things that I want to go over has to deal with outliers. When you have outliers, outliers, outliers can affect your data. Now, they're not necessarily going to affect your mean and your median, but the outliers are going to affect your mean. So outliers affect your mean. What ends up happening is the more outliers you have, the greater your mean is going to be, or less than your mean is going to be, depending on your skewness. So if you have a right skewed distribution like at the top, if you keep adding more to as outliers on the right, it's going to pull your mean and make it greater. Now when you're finding your mean and your median and having it on a graph, here if you have a right skewed distribution, your median is going to be close to your peak and your mean is going to be pulled closer towards your tail. So here you have your median and here you have your mean. Okay. The same goes as if you have a left skewed distribution. Here you're going to have your median and here you're going to have your mean, your x-bar. 
So looking at these two, you can see that in this situation, your mean is greater than your median. In the middle situation, your mean is less than your median. And when you have a symmetrical distribution, your mean and your median are equal to each other. They may not be exactly equal, but for the most part, your mean and your median are going to be extremely close to each other, uh, depending on if your graph is perfectly symmetrical. If it's perfectly symmetrical, they're equal. If it's a tad bit different, then they're most likely, um, they're still going to be equal to each other, they're just not going to be exact. Okay, so here you can see the first one, mean is greater than median when it's right skewed, or mean is less than median when it's left skewed. One other way to remember that is that you can say the mean is closer to your tail of your distribution, and your median is closer to your peak of your distribution. Okay, so somehow you're going to want to remember that median is closer to the tail, and median, to me, mean is closer to your tail, and median is closer to your peak. So why is it important to know um, that the mean goes closer to the tail? So let's look at this problem. The mean test score of a statistics class is 85. The median test score is 92. You could be asked, what is the shape of the distribution? In which summary should we use to describe this distribution? Or you could be asked to describe this distribution and what it looks like on a graph. So let's look at those numbers. When we have these numbers for uh, a class average of a mean of 85, so we'll say that this is where 85 is at. Here's 80, here's 90, and here's 95. And 90, so here we have 85 as the class average, and 92 is about right here. We want to know, well, what would that distribution look like? We know that it will probably go up to about 100. So does that mean that we have a symmetrical distribution? If you look at the two numbers, 85 and 92, they're really not close to each other. So we don't have a symmetrical distribution. We have some sort of skewed distribution. And knowing those numbers, we have to be able to figure out which. So looking at those numbers and knowing that this is x bar and this is your median here, then we could say, remember, that the mean is closer to the tail. So hopefully we would have a graph that would look like this, which is what a teacher would love to be able to see when they give a test, that most of its students in the class got an 85 or a 95 or a 90 or a 100 in their class. So the shape of this distribution would be left skewed. The summary statistic that you would want to use, remember, would be your median because you have a skewed distribution. So we would want to say that the class center was a 92 for this graph. So a different problem, if we changed it to the mean test score of a stats class is 75 and the median test score is 65 and we wanted to know what the shape of the distribution was, well again, we could have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 for our scores. Okay, now we need to graph what those all are. So we would want to put a dot basically where 75 is and a dot where 65 is. Here we have those two numbers marked where the median, remember, is 65 and the mean is 75. Now remember, if they're not exact, then it's not symmetrical. So this is not really a symmetrical distribution. So we would want to find out now which shape is it, left skewed or right skewed. Now remember that the mean goes closer to the tail. So we are going to have a distribution that looks more like this, which would be considered right skewed. And again, because it's skewed, we are going to use the median as our center, which in this situation would be 65. Now, this would not be what a teacher would like to see when giving a test, because that means that most of the students scored less than the median and the mean when they're doing, or excuse me, they scored less than the mean on their test. Okay, roughly half of the students got a 65 or less on this test because that median, remember, is the center point. And we know that the median is a middle term. So we're saying half the class here got a 65 or less, and half the class here got above a 65, which is generally not a good score for a test. 
So in summary, you want to make sure you're either choosing mean or median for your center. Remember that mean you are going to use for a symmetrical distribution and median you are going to use for a skewed distribution. You want to remember that depending on how it is that the mean, what your graph looks like, the mean is closer to the tail of your graph and the median goes closer to the peak of your graph as a little summary tidbit of information.